You are a Locked On Braves postcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, your team every day. And hello and welcome in to the Braves postcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. Grant McCauley, Jake Mastroianni with you after another good day for the Braves on their road trip out west. They've already secured one series win and they'd like to win two more of those series. So that's going to take quite a few more victories, but always good to start out by taking that first one. And they did that with a 7-3 victory behind Max Fried over the San Francisco Giants on Saturday afternoon. We're going to talk all about that, some timely Braves hitting and home runs, and, of course, get you set up for the series finale as the Braves go for a sweep of the Giants on Sunday night baseball. Before we do that, though, I want to remind you to subscribe to Locked On Sports Atlanta right here on YouTube. Make sure you click that bell. You'll get notified every time we drop a new episode. Leave us a like and a comment. We appreciate all those. And, of course, be subscribed to Locked On Braves wherever you get your podcasts for all of this stuff we bring you on the podcast and much, much more. Uh, Jake, I feel like we saw perhaps the best start so far for Max Fried. I know that one against the Cubs, it was impressive right out of the gate, but he was able to grind through this one. He really relied on the curveball and piled up some strikeouts, and the pitch count was finally back up, I think, where Braves fans would love to see it, and I'm sure where Max Fried would like it to be. Yeah, definitely another step in the right direction for him. I think he's been pretty good in just about all of his starts. He had a little hiccup in Pittsburgh, which again, really, I don't think was his fault. But uh, again, he's throwing the ball well. He is having to battle, but he's your ace, and that's exactly what you expect him to do. Yeah, and you want him to have that time to get ready for when you need your ace to be at his best. And that, of course, is October. And he's got, uh, I think he's on the right path, as you pointed out. I think he's been building on that. Let's talk about game number 128 of the year for the Braves. They're now 84 and 44. The simple math tells you they're 40 games over 500. Seven runs on nine hits, no errors. Six men left on base for the Braves. Giants at 66 and 63 now as they drop the first two games of the series. Three runs, eight hits, no errors. Seven men left aboard. Max Reed picks up the win. He's five and one. Sean Manaya took the loss in relief. He's four and five. Game lasted two hours, 41 minutes. 36,798 packed into Oracle Park to see it. And what they saw, I thought, was again a good start from Max Fried. Uh, six innings, six hits, couple of walks, one home run. That was the one pitch I think he wanted back to Wilmer Flores, of course. But the eight strikeouts, and again, the pitch count at 98. This is the most that we've seen and the furthest that we've seen the Braves allow Freed to go since coming back from that forearm issue. This is great to see, obviously, as he's trying to get built back up here, using his all of his pitches as he typically does in this one. And I still think it's a, a start where he didn't have the greatest control in the world. And he had to kind of battle and figure it out and and find the pitch that's working. I know earlier in the game he he tried to throw a, a change up to Ramos and didn't quite hit it. And so next batter he came back through the exact same thing and it was perfect. So again, I still think he's trying to to find that that consistency with his control and command. But Six innings, two runs for a guy who I think still had to bat a little bit and grind through this one. I think you will definitely take that. And you know what Max Fried is capable of doing. You mentioned, you know, the one guy in their lineup that can really hurt you who's having a really good year there in Flores, a slider that stayed too much over the middle of the plate and he deposited into center field. But uh, again, this is what you expect from Max Fried. And it is, you know, the consistency in terms of the results. It's still just, I think, for him, more so getting the more consistency on and feel for those pitches when he as he's coming back here. So, again, another great step in the right direction for Max Free to get him ready here down the stretch. Yeah, and to come right back out against a team that he had just seen not too long ago, I think that is kind of part of a test on a day like this where you know they got to be familiar with you because they saw you not too long ago. So what are you going to do maybe a little bit differently? And at the end of the day, I feel like, what are you going to throw that can be the most effective? And that can be a problem that has many different solutions at many different times during the game. But I thought thought that Max Fried and Sean Murphy did a nice job of working together to get that all figured out. Again, the season high 98 pitches, I thought, was kind of the stat that jumped off the page. But six innings, a two-run ball. You'll take that every single time out. And I thought Max looked pretty good and able to navigate the times in which he needed to make big pitches, as Jake mentioned. He made some big pitches, was able to get out of trouble. Now, the offense, if you give them six innings of two-run ball and the Braves' bullpen does what it typically has, well, you got a good chance to win a ball game, and the Braves, they were powered at first by Matt Olson, the Major League's RBI leader. He knocked in the first two runs of the game, three for five day, Jake. I feel like Matt's kind of been looking for one of those where he could pile up a few base hits. Of course, driving in runs is something he's been very good at, especially out of the cleanup spot. And 112 RBI now leads all of Major League Baseball, and 
No other hitter has reached the 100 plateau as of yet. So Matt's in some elite company because the club is exactly one person. But good to see him with the multi-hit game because things had slowed down over the last week or 10 days. They have some great swings here. Three hard hit balls in this game. And you love that one in the first inning. Obviously, the Braves scoring another first inning run like they do. But a good slider down and in. And that slider uh, that Walker was throwing there, I mean, it made Ronald Acuna Jr. look a little (laughs) foolish. It had Michael Harris striking out as well. But he was able to stay on that down and in. And he almost knocked down that wall in right field. He hit it so hard. So, I mean, it carried him so far off that Riley was able to score from first base, about the only way that he's able to do so there. So great job by Matt Olson. Good to see him get on track, get the three hits. Mentioned Riley on base. I thought he had a good game as well. So great to see those two guys both getting going. Yeah, we're going to get into that. But I will say, Austin Riley is surprisingly quicker than you might think he is. I was looking at those StatCast leaderboards the other day, and he honestly gets around pretty well for a guy that's weighing 235, 240 maybe. I mean, he's a big boy. Let's just put it that way. But yeah, scoring from first, not the thing you expect necessarily from Austin Riley's bag of tricks, but good to see Matt Olson with those hard-hit balls, those three base hits. And speaking of hard-hit balls and Austin Riley, home run number 30 of the year. That came as a go-ahead shot in the fifth inning. It broke a 2-2 tie. Uh, Riley with that, his only hit, but those couple of walks, of course, he sparked that rally in the first inning. But 30 home runs, Jake, I went back and looked at this. And you know, the Braves franchise dates back over 150 years now. And Riley is just the third Braves third baseman ever to have three consecutive 30 homer campaigns. He joins Eddie Matthews and Chipper Jones. I would say that's a pretty good club to be in if you're Austin Riley. Yeah, you want to hear those names being mentioned with you and and numbers that you're putting up. And look, we know there's been some ups and downs with Austin Riley. It's the consistency really that kind of frustrates you. And you've heard him say kind of frustrates himself as well. Mm-hmm. But I'll go back to the first at bat of last night, uh, Friday night's game. Is a line out to first base, but I thought it was a really good at bat. He t- took a couple of tough pitches. He was able to foul off a slider down and away to stay in live. And then, like I said, he shot one to first base. Unfortunate line out. Went over four, but in that at bat, it just looked to me like Riley was seeing the ball much better. And then he comes back tonight. And like I said, after Walker had struck out Acuna, struck out Harris, he gets a walk there mm-hmm. to spark that rally. He walks in the next inning and then he gets a home run later in the game. So, We know how hot he can be when he gets going, and you're looking for those signs, and it's more so him being able to lay off those sliders down in the way or at least be able to fight those off and stay alive. And I've seen that here in these last two games. So hopefully that's signs in the beginnings of Austin Riley getting ready to have another breakout here. Yeah, absolutely. The 30th home run, he joins Matt Olson as the first of the the first two of what could be, what, four or five different Braves hitters that could hit 30 home runs this year. Ozzy Albies just two away. Marcelo Zuna knocking on that door as well. And we'll see if anybody else, uh, Ronald Acuna Jr., I think, might make that 30 home run club. You've got some pretty good hitters, you know, especially lined up one through five as it is now in the Braves order. And they all have that big time power. And Austin Riley, I think, has as much or more power than just about anybody. Speaking of sparking rallies and power, though he used the wheels in this one, Ronald Acuna Jr., one for five, a run scored. He stole third base. I thought that was a big play in the third inning. Uh, I know there was some, you know, I guess, you know, logic that it could be he scores on a single anyway, but I like putting the pressure on him. And I do think there's a lot of value in the way that Ron Lacuna Jr. does run the bases. And it wasn't a particularly close play, despite the fact that the Giants have a pretty nice stolen base deterrent behind the plate. And that made it that much easier for Matt Olson to dump a single in the left field and Ronald to come on home with the second run of the game. There's a lot of different ways he can affect this one. I still feel like there's a home run binge up his sleeve somewhere at some point before we're done with this season. But Ronald just continues to find his way on base and continues to score runs at a higher clip than anybody else in baseball. Yeah, he does. And I like what you said a minute ago. There, there's so many ways that he affects the game. And not to get into the MVP discussion, but it was kind of heated this weekend from an ESPN writer who may have said something in uh, towards a, not, Acuna not being the favorite. But it's just for me what he does in so many ways when he's on first base you have to pay attention to him and that affects the pitch that is thrown when he's on second and he can steal third which he's done several times this year and you do so with one out it gives you a better chance of getting that run in the catch that he made last night in right center field was a great catch as well so he just does so many things well for you to help you 
win a ball game. I don't think it's any coincidence. He's batting leadoff, and the Braves have scored a million runs in the first inning, and this offense gets going. It's all around Ronald Acuna Jr., and there's just so many ways that he impacts the game to help you win. So that's why, for me, I think he is the best player in the game right now and what he's doing. And, again, I, I joked, jokingly said last night, everybody's saying he's he's cooled off right now. If this is your, your cool-down period for a player, uh, I think most people would take that. Yeah, a lot of guys would take his off month as their best, best month of the season. There's just no two ways about it. But to go back to the base running thing, and again, it's not to take away from the fact that, hey, maybe some other guys are also good at running the bases. It doesn't have to be one guy. It just The fact is, Ronald's doing things that other people aren't doing. And if it was that easy to steal 50, 60 bases, well, wouldn't there be a whole bunch of guys out there doing it? But in this play on this day, the way I felt about it was, with Matt Olson up there, the chance to lift a fly ball, you have a sack fly is now part of the equation when you're on third base with one out, let alone a base hit where you're going to score. It just, as you mentioned, it puts more pressure on the pitcher and, and more pressure on that battery and the defense as well if they know that Ronald's at third base and they got to account for that. And I think that's just one of the many things that makes him a great player and one of the many things that makes him, I think, the MVP favorite in the National League, even if other guys get this, have really great cases themselves. That's kind of the whole point. Everybody plays great, and they vote at the end of the year, and we find out it doesn't take away from anybody's greatness, let alone what Ronald's doing from a historical perspective. When he gets those 30 homers and those 60 steals, he'll be the only guy in baseball history to have ever done that. And again, if it was that easy, somebody somewhere would have done it in some era of Major League Baseball. Let's put all that to the side, though. Uh, also in this game, Eddie Rosario was one for two. Uh, he drew a couple of walks as well and knocked in a run, scored a run, Orlando Arcia. How about home run number 15 of the year for him? Ties a career high. He's got about a month to add to that. Maybe he'll be another man to join the 20 home run club. It's certainly in play for him if he has a big September. And the Braves were able to play three runs in the eighth inning. Eddie Rosario's RBI single was there, a couple of sack flies. Just a really great job, I thought, of the Braves' offense of playing some long ball, but also getting those hits, using some speed, and manufacturing a couple of runs late to really put this game away. Yeah, they did. I mean, again, this offense just, uh, you know, can keep coming at you. And it's great to see that. I, I always talk about it scoring in each of the, the segment, segment, three inning segments of the game, one through three, four through uh, six and seven through nine there. And that's what this team is able to do and to put teams away like this. You mentioned Max Freed gives you those six innings of two earned. You know, with this offense, you know that's going to at least be enough to put them in the game. You give this offense enough at bats, they're going to be able to put up some runs, and they were able to do that with that three-run eighth inning to really put it away. Yeah, and all of a sudden it doesn't really matter if the Giants happen to play to run in the ninth and make a little bit of noise because it went from being a manageable 4-2 to two game to a 7-2 to two game really quick because the Braves did their work in that eighth inning. Uh, as far as what's going on on Sunday, the Braves will be looking for a sweep of the San Francisco Giants as they continue the first series of this three-city tour out west. They'll be going to Colorado after that. And as we know, there are a couple of MVP candidates waiting for them in Los Angeles when they face the Dodgers to close out the trip for four games. Before we talk about Sunday's finale and what's ahead for the Braves, I want to tell you all about FanDuel because they are the sponsor of today's edition of the Braves postcast. If you are getting ready for the NFL season, then you want to check out the incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet that $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now's the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use and can be on everything from spreads to player props and more. Check it all out. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off NFL season with an offer you don't want to miss. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. As far as what's happening on Sunday, it'll be the Braves and the Giants looking to close things out. It'll be left-hander Jared Schuster getting the start. He was brought up a few days ago, and I think it was the idea if they needed a long man, they would have somebody that could throw multiple innings, and now he's been able to hang around, and I think the Braves can kind of mix him in and other minor leaguers in as they look to give different guys in the rotation that extra day down the stretch. And when you're 40 games over 500, I feel like you can do that, especially with an offense like the Braves have. Schuster's 4-2, and two, ERA of 5. Tristan Beck, the righty, will get the ball for the San Francisco Giants. He's 3-2 and two with a 334 ERA. I'm interested to see what Jared Schuster has to offer the Braves, but if he's able to do anything close to, you know, five runs, or excuse me, five innings and three uh, runs or six innings and three runs, quality start, I think he's going to have a pretty good chance to win a ball game on Sunday. That's what we've kind of been saying about the, the fifth starter role all year long. If you can just give me somebody to give you five innings and three earned, I think you'll take that out of your fifth start, especially with this offense and what they can do. Hopefully we'll get that 
from Jared Schuster. Haven't seen him at the big league level in quite some time and uh, just kind of been up and down at the minor league level. His last three starts, five earned runs, no earned runs, and then five earned runs. So kind of just been up and down for him. So, uh, But hopefully he can get it together and keep the offense in the game. Tristan Beck was really good against the Braves last time they saw him. So it could be a tough matchup for them. But hopefully the Braves can continue the streak they got going here and keep uh, sweep this series against the Giants. Now, if I understand it right, you had a pattern that was a bad start, good start, bad start, good start. Then that would put Jared yeah. Schuster on good That's start. Right for Sunday for the Braves on Sunday Night Baseball. Anyway, he's 4-2, and two, ERA of 5. He'd like to lower that and give the Braves a chance to sweep the Giants. Tristan Beck again, 3-2 and two with a nice 334 ERA, and as Jake mentioned, threw pretty well last time out against Atlanta. 7-10 p.m. Eastern time is the first pitch at Oracle Park for the finale of this three-game series. That'll wrap us up here on this edition of the Braves Postcast. We appreciate you, as always, checking us out, riding along with us after as many Braves games as we can bring them to. You'll find it right here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. So make sure you are subscribed on YouTube. Click the bell to get notified. When we drop a new episode, you'll know all about it. Leave us a like, a comment, share the show with a friend. We appreciate that. And, of course, subscribe to Locked On Braves wherever you get your podcast. Once again, the Braves with a 7-3 win over the Giants to wrap up this um, the second game, and they'll wrap up the series on Sunday. Looking for that sweep behind Jared Schuster. He's Jake Mastriani. I'm Grant McCauley. We will catch you on Sunday. And until then, so long, everyone.